How's it going everybody? David Hedge here, House Hedge Gaming, and the Halloween season is upon us. And what better way to kick off the Halloween season than by having a game hit the gaming table to where you are facing off against the Ancient Ones, the Elder Gods, the ones who can bring madness and destruction upon the world. Do you have what it takes to seal off four gates before Cthulhu rises from Rael and takes over the world? There's only one way to find out. Let's show you how to play Reign of Cthulhu, the pandemic system from Z-Man Games. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is Reign of Cthulhu, a pandemic system game from Z-Man Games. And what a way to kick off the Halloween season by dealing with ancient ones and elder gods. So the setup for this game is just like pandemic, except for one or two minor alterations. Number one, you have elder gods you have to set out. You have six Elder Gods you set out. The seventh one is Cthulhu because one of the ways to lose the game is that if we go through all these six awakenings and then the seventh time he gets awakened, we lose the game. No questions asked. Uh, next, you will have to set up all the cultists and the Shogoths that will be starting out the game. So, just like Pandemic, you'll take the first two cards of the deck and you will set three cultists to each of those locations. The next two cards, you will set two. Then the next two cards, you set one. And then finally, at the last card, you set one of these ugly little bad boys out on the board. And these things can cause a lot more trouble than you think. They might look cute and cuddly, but definitely not. Next, after you deal the players out four cards each for a two-player game, and depending on how many other players you have, it'd be three or two. You will also divide this deck out to four stacks after you add in relic cards uh, in your deck, depending on number of players as well. Now, these are pretty much like the all's quiet cards and stuff like that that helps you out in the game, except these can cause a little bit of madness, which we'll go over later. After you shuffle in the relics, you deal them out in four even stacks, and on each one of those stacks, you put an Evil Stirs card. Now, this is based like the uh, the Epidemic card for Pandemic, except this, in my opinion, is a whole lot worse. But it goes there, gets shuffled in, and gets put on top. And once all this is set up, and the players have chosen their uh, characters for the game, then the game truly begins. Now here we have the setup for a two-player game where a detective and a doctor, no, not that doctor, will be going up against the Ancient Ones. Each of these players will have their starting abilities, four cards in their starting hand, three starting sanity, which will be lost throughout the game, but trust me, it will happen. And finally, each character will have an action card to reference, and unfortunately, the sanity card tells you when you're going to be going crazy. Now, during a player's turn, a player will have four actions, or sometimes five, depending on their card abilities and relic abilities, stuff like that, to do the following. So, for one action, you can walk from one place to another. Now, everybody starts out at the train station when you first begin the game. So, you will walk from one place to another, and you'll see that they're all connected by the white line. So, unfortunately, for example, if the detective wanted to go to the park, he would have to go through the university to get to the park. You could take a bus, so if you're at a station, so for example, ones with the bus symbol here, you could discard a clue card at that station to move to any location in that town or anywhere if the card matches your current town. So, let me stand that guy back up. For example, the Wow, you guys are drunk. All right. So, for example, the good doctor here wants to go to Innsmouth. If he has a card that matches his part of town that he is in, he can go to Innsmouth or anywhere else for that matter. He could just discard a clue card to go anywhere. So, if he just has, say, Innsmouth, he's in Arkham, he can go anywhere in Arkham. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, is something that is very rare that you can do is that you can use a gate. Now, during the game, you will have four gates that are open at the start. You will have to close those gates at some point during the game, but you can use those to your advantage. So you can go to a gate 
and activate it to go to any of the open gates on the board. However, if you do, you must roll the sandy die because you're going through interdimensional travel. You gotta go a little crazy. Next up, if players are in the same area, you can give or take one clue or relic card. Same location as uh, you're in. So for example, if these two gentlemen here are at the bus station in Arkham and the doctor has an Arkham card, they can give it to the detective and vice versa. Same thing for the relics if they are drawn in the game. Next, if you're in a location with a cultist, you can defeat the cultist using an action to remove him from the board and he goes back to supply. But don't worry, he'll be back eventually. Now, to defeat a Shogoth, it is a lot tougher to do so. So you need three actions to defeat a Shogoth. If you do, you get to remove him from the location and you gain an all-important relic card to help you fight the forces of the Ancient Ones. Finally, on your turn, if you have five of the same color clue cards, you can seal a gate in that corresponding region. So for example, this gate will have an elder sign put up and seals that gate permanently, which means that nothing can come through there. More importantly, you can't use it anymore, but also this is one step closer to the good guys defeating the Ancient Ones. Now, after a player has accomplished their actions, now they get to draw two cards from the deck. Now, they draw them one at a time, and it's a cooperative game you can show face up. So right here, for this one, for the Doctor, he draws an Arkham card. And then, oh my lord, evil stirs. So when this happens, a lot of bad stuff goes down. So first, the player that flipped it over, they must roll this die. Now this die here, which you will find after a star fall, just happens to go on evil stirs. You will find here on your sanity uh, reminder on the back of your action card, and you roll the die. So if it's blank, no effect happens. If this symbol shows up, you lose a sanity. If this symbol shows up, you lose two sanity. And if this shows up, you add two cultists to your location, which can be really bad. Uh, now, after you resolve that for the evil stirs, you then awaken. So you reveal the first ancient one in the track. If it has this symbol here, this is the infinity symbol, which means this thing is gonna take place and it's gonna happen and make it a long lasting effect throughout the game. So with this one, as a top, you remove three cultists from the unused supply, which means three of these cultists are gonna go bye-bye permanently. And one of the ways that evil wins is that, just like in Pandemic, if a virus runs out of cubes to place, if there are no more cultists to go onto the board, the game is over, so he just made it a lot harder for the good guys to win. Next, as evil stirs, a Shogoth appears. So you draw the bottom card of the summoning deck. So for example, the university. The Shogoth will go to the university for higher learning, but also to cause some mass destruction and madness in the process. Finally, the cultists regroup, so you shovel the summoning discard pile and put the cards on top of the summoning deck. This is the this is the one thing I hated, I hated about Pandemic, is you take that discard pile that you worked through and you saw everything happen to those locations, shuffle them back up, like so, and then they go on top. Now, this goes this, the discard, everything is okay for now. Finally, after you draw two cards, you now go through the summoning card drawing. Now, depending on the track you're on, which ancient one is awakened, gives you how many you turn over. So the first few is gonna end up being two. So let's say, for example, this one, one cultist will be put at the hospital. Now, as you see, three cultists are already at the hospital. Now, since we flipped over the hospital, another cultist would go there. But since there are already three at the hospital, think of it this way. This fourth one tries to go here, the other three grab him, use him as a sacrifice, and he awakens another ancient one. 
So since we have to awaken another ancient one, the next one gets turned over. And this one is going to be really bad. Shub Nigaroth. Draw four cards in the bottom of the summoning deck and add one cultist to each of those locations. Discard these cards in the summoning discard pile. Now, we're not going to go through this because I know how this game is going to end up because I don't have Cindy with me. I'm going to end up losing. But we would deal the bottom four cards of this deck. One cultist we put at each location. And then those cards would be put into the discard pile, which means they'd be cycled through later on down the line. Now that was after the first card flip. Now we're going to flip the second card. The second card is a market. So an ancient occultist for the ancient ones will go to the market. Now I am going to cheat here because I am big day cheats. I've been told this before. And you will see that there are cards that when they're flipped over, they'll have this little symbol at the bottom. So this Shugoth symbol means that each Shugoth that is on the board will go towards the nearest gate that is open. So, see, I told you. That's the reason why I didn't do this. So, if this would have flipped, this Shugoth would have went here. This Shugoth would have went there. Now, the good news is that those Shugoths would have been removed from the board because they went through the portal and went home. However, each one of those Shugoths would trigger another Ancient One Awakening. So, in a game where, yes... This would have actually happened with me. Four Ancient Ones would have awakened in one turn and surely would have meant the destruction of the world. Sorry, guys. Now, we mentioned it before, but let's go over the sanity for characters. Each player has three starting sanity. And yes, there are ways to gain back sanity, but there's a lot more ways to lose it. One of which I already covered was the die. Now, if this die gets rolled, nothing happens, everything's fine. If it rolls this one, you would lose one sandy, the player that rolled the die. Same thing with this, you would lose two. And finally, if this got rolled, two cultists would put it at your location. If there would be three cultists that are already there, and if this gets rolled, then you got to deal with those little suckers. And when I mean little suckers, I mean they're going to summon another ancient one because these could not be placed on a location with three. But let's say our detective is down to one sandy. He rolls the die. And he gets the symbol. He loses his sanity, so he goes insane. You can still use your character. You still have a chance to fight. However, it makes your actions weaker, and your ability changes to make it a little bit harder for you to be able to complete your mission of stopping the Ancient Ones from crossing over. Now, there are two things to keep in mind when the game uh, is unfolding in front of your eyes. One, the relic cards, like I said, they are basically like the helper cards in Pandemic. However, when you use a relic, you are wielding an magical power, and so you have to roll the sandy die to see if you keep your sandy or if these drive you just ever so closer to madness. And finally, when playing the game, the ways to win are simple. To close all four gates around the city. If the heroes are able to close all four gates, they win the game. Evil wins the game in a lot of different ways. One, if Cthulhu is awakened, evil wins the game. If there are not enough cultists left in this unused supply to place any cultists on the board when this is flipped for the summoning, they win the game. When there are not enough Shugoths left to be placed on the board, Evil wins the game. Now, a little heads up for you, ladies and gentlemen. Only three Shogoths are in the are in the game. So a fourth Shogoth, uh, if it tries to be summoned, you're in trouble. Next, there are not enough player cards left when needed. So if this deck runs out, the players lose the game. And finally, if all players have their cards flipped over to the madness side, then evil wins the game. So this is exactly like Pandemic. You are fighting to try and stop the Ancient Ones from coming up and ruining the world like the viruses in Pandemic. But I have faith in you. I know that you can do it a lot better than I can because you, my friends, during this haunted Halloween season can stop the reign of Cthulhu.
Well, there you have it. That is Pandemic, the Reign of Cthulhu version of the game. And I have to tell you, it is a hit here at the household. Uh, Cindy played it for the first time, and as soon as she played it, she really enjoyed the flavor of it. She enjoyed it more than Pandemic. Maybe that's because we have lived through a pandemic, and we have gotten through that. Now we can face the Elder Gods. <laughs> but either way, uh, this game is a lot of fun. It's very tricky to see which Elders will come up, because it's an ever-changing thing. It's an ever-changing thing for that, what relics you have in your decks, uh, the... Shugaroths, where they're going to be going throughout the game. And as you saw in the little demo setup I had, there was a chance to where you had four awakenings happen in one turn. That's how quickly the game can change. But you know what? It is still a whole lot of fun to play. And if you go a little crazy while doing it, it's perfectly fine. It's ancient ones. It's expected. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you like it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let everybody know the House Hedge Gaming is here for all of your gaming needs. So until next time, guys, stay safe and take care.